Hey, what's up everyone, Craig here. And in this video, I'm gonna show you through my collection of Aeoniums. That's giant succulents, and some of the best succulents in my opinion, that you can grow in your garden. Now, I've actually added hardier Aeoniums to my collection, and that's what I'm gonna focus on showing you today. Plants like this, Aeonium cyclops, which is absolutely massive, and this survived last winter outside in my garden. So let's have a look at the plants that I've added to the collection, and I'll show you some of my other Aeoniums as well, while we're taking a look. So here's some of the Aeoniums I've had in my collection for two or three years, and you can see why their common name is the giant house leek, because they can grow to form stems like this, that's all, got all of the older leaf scars on it, because as they grow, the older leaves, like this, will dry up and drop off, and at the top of the rosette, you've got all this fresh flush of beautiful new, le new leaves forming this geometric pattern on the top. Now this giant, as I said at the start of the video, is Aeonium Cyclops, and this is amazing. It can grow enormous. They are really well suited to growing in a pot, and which is fantastic, because if you're in a garden like mine, which is heavy clay and the drainage is terrible, it means you can give them that good free draining soil mix that plants like this need. And even though it's been growing in a pot, Let's squeeze down to the bottom here. It's still branching and chucking out offsets. So if I potted it on, this would become a multi-branched plant, much like this Aeonium cultivar here. And when they're multi-branched, I think they are really attractive plants, but grown as a big specimen with a single rosette, they just add so much impact. Here you can see more branched specimens. I can't remember the names of these. Um, these are just ones that I chuck in my greenhouse in winter and bring out for the summer display. And like I say, they're all in pots, all stacked up just to create this nice effect of succulents trailing over the rockery that leads along the edge of my gravel path. But let's have a look at the hardy succulents that I recently bought from Surreal Succulents. So in front of you here is a collection of the hardier cultivars and species that I've added that I've recently purchased from Surreal Succulents. And the guys at Surreal are absolutely smashing it. They've just won Plant of the Year at Chelsea 2022, and they've won a gold medal, another gold medal for one of their display gardens. Um, so they really know their stuff. Now you can see that some of my Aeoniums here, which have been outside, have succumbed to the local wildlife jolt on the camera there because I just fell into my own water bottle. <laughs> Slugs absolutely love eating the leaves of these. Um, you can see, if we come over to this one, they just eat into the flesh of the leaves, which is frustrating, but as I always say, if there's not holes in the leaves of your plants, you're not sharing your garden. There's, it's still got this healthy growth point here. It's still forming a branch, so no worries. So if we start from this one, this is Aeonium Ice Warrior. Now on the Surreal website, it said that this has frequently survived winters with them. It didn't say anything about surviving snail and slug attacks, so we'll see what happens here. But this was a tiny plant when I got it. Um, it was much more green, so it's coloured up in the sunlight, which is a great thing about Aeoniums. They change colour depending on how much light they're getting, um, which is why variegated ones like this, let's get the grass out of the way. Aeonium Fiesta is so popular. It's green at this point, and then as it gets the heat of the summer sun on it, it starts with this green variegation, and then it goes out to a dark purple at the tips. Just next to that is one that's a bit more understated, but I actually really like it. This is Aeonium Cornish Pixie. Now, a lot of these cultivars or well, they'll all be hybrids. They've self-seeded in and around Cornwall, or they've been bred by Cornish enthusiasts. And in Cornwall, they've got a great climate, much warmer in the winters, so Aeoniums are surviving. Um, and it's a great starting point to try and experiment and find cultivars and hybrids that might survive winter for me. I'm in Dorset, so I'm not that far away from Cornwall, um, but I don't have the luxury of the winters they get down there but I'm gonna leave all of these new additions out this winter and just to see how they get on. 
Um, I love this one because although it's tiny, it's very, very free branching and it should form a nice compact mat of these really architectural rosettes of these fleshy leaves. Now, behind that is one that I've grown before. This is Aeonium Firecracker. Ah, oh, the label's gone. Yeah, I think it's Firecracker. Um, this usually has a green center with dark purple leaves, but it's got these splotches on it, which I have been told is sunburn. So I've been saying that the weather this spring has been perfect for tropical plants because we've been getting constant rainfall and bright sunshine. But those of you who grow plants outdoors or under glass will know that raindrops sitting on a leaf followed by bright sunshine can intensify the light of that sun, which is causing these marks on the leaves. Um, so it, it's not any damage to the plant, um, not enough to stop it growing. And as you can see, this is another branching specimen. Um, I've actually got a more mature one on the other side of the path over here. So you can see the coloration it should be. Now this one I've had for years and I'm just letting it get really long and gangly just to see how these plants grow into different forms. And again, it's in a pot along with the one next to it, which is sending out those flower spikes up here. If we come back to my new additions, this one is pomegranate, Aeonium pomegranate. Now this in full sun goes to like a pinky, almost orange color at the leaf edges with that green heart. And this is one I've been after for a while and you can see it's got that same sun damage. Um, but this should grow with a tall stem like the Aeonium Cyclops and all of these have branching habits. So as they get taller or if I chop the top off for propagation, they'll branch out and there'll be loads of rosettes and they should be really architectural. And I'm trying to find architectural, evergreen, exotic and tropical plants that I can leave out in my garden all winter, which is why I've added these to the collection just to experiment and see how far I can push this tropical style of garden in the colder winter months. At the back here is another newbie. This is Aeonium Maximus, and it is growing so fast. Now this doesn't have the coloration of the other plants, um, but it has got much longer individual leaves and a more upward facing rosette, whereas these ones have a compact, flatter front. Um, I think this one's gonna be a real doer because like I say, it's growing like absolutely mad. And then down the front again, something that the slugs are finding tasty also, is Aeonium Cornish Rose. Now this one had a really interesting story. This hasn't been bred. It is a natural hybrid that is self-seeded onto the cliffs in Cornwall and it is happily surviving year after year and getting through the winters. So someone has propagated from it and given it a cultivar name of Cornish Rose. So if it can survive on the cliffs in Cornwall, which will obviously be free draining and warm because of their proximity to the sea, hopefully it can survive here. Now, as I said, I'm on heavy clay soil, so all of these are growing in pots and um, aeoniums and most succulents are perfectly adapted to growing in pots really, really happily. But the trick is to give them a really free draining soil mix. So it's not as gravelly as it looks. I've top dressed them with gravel to try and deter the slugs. Um, but I've done a 50-50 mix of horticultural grit and multi-purpose compost. And that just gives a really, really free draining mix. So even though we've been getting all this rain, anything that's landing in the pot should drain through quite freely. And um, because they're sat on the soil in my garden, every now and again, I've just got to lift them up and make sure that the holes at the bottom of the pot are still open so that drainage can come through. That's the hardier aeoniums that I've got in my collection. But while we're here, why not have a look at other ones that I'm growing? So you can see this really, really cool variegated one at the back. This is a cultivar called Fiesta. I think. 
bear with me. No, this is Mardi Gras. And this is the ultimate color changing Aeonium. God, I've got so many plants, I can't get the shot. There you go. So it has this creamy leaf margin in the middle that goes out to a hot pink and then dark purple. This is one of my favorites and this is branching now, starting to get a stem and sending out more rosettes. So that will be beautiful. Now, as I said, all of these are from the guys at Surreal Succulents and breeding plants and Aeoniums that are hardy is a real mission of theirs at the moment. And they've actually crossed Aeoniums with the much hardier succulent, Sempervivum. And it's an intergeneric hybrid, which took a lot of planning for them to achieve. Um, but they've created this new genus of Semponiums. And it's one of these Semponium cultivars, I think it's one called Diamond, that's actually one plant of the year. So I think you're gonna see a lot more of these plants and this new Semponium genus in and around gardens because they are absolutely fantastic and if these can survive winter and i'm going to have to add some of the semponiums now it will just be amazing to have this architectural look in the garden in those cold winter months now i showed you the difference between some more open rosettes and flatter but this one here aeonium tabuliform has the ultimate flat rosette tabuliform is like table topped form um, I've got this in a pot really leaning over because tabuliform hates to have sitting water on the top. So having it like this, the water can just run off freely. Um, and this is how they naturally grow in stone walls or on rocky um, cliff fronts. Um, so it's loving it here. And actually it must be working because there's none of that rain damage on this plant. Another variegated one here. This is Aeonium sunburst. Um, or possibly kiwi. It was unlabeled and the two look very similar. I really like this one and it's very free branching. Um, so you get a lovely clump and it's, this is in a small, I think a nine centimeter pot, but it's still managing to put on a lot of growth. And this is the darkest of them all. It's Warkoff. Um, this is one that I used for propagation. So I chopped the top off and I'll put the link to my propagation video in here so you can learn how to propagate from these plants but you can see how quickly they recover it's sending out all these new rosettes which again you can propagate propagate individual plants from each one so there's a quick look through some of the aeoniums that i'm growing in my collection i absolutely love these plants and i'm really excited by the idea of being able to possibly grow some more that i can leave outside because this winter i only left that giant cyclops outside and um, i'm pleased with how it got through and like I say, they can get a bit tatty in winter and the slugs and snails will come out, but they'll quickly put on new growth and look great in the summer months. Thank you so much for watching. Um, feel free to check out the link to my plant and seed shop and I will see you all in the next video. See ya.